Well, good morning and welcome to Big Church. Kids, thank you for joining with us in worship this morning. It's a lot of fun. So I guess adults, what I wanna say to you is thank you for letting our kids come in with us on these fifth Sundays. Because you know what? They do need to know they're a part of tiny town and uptown and downtown. But what they really need to know is that they're a part of all of this too. And it's so important for them to see you as adults worshiping and praising God. And it's so important for them to know that they belong here. So when they get to be teenagers and young adults, they know this is a place for them. So thank you for allowing us to worship together this morning. So for a couple of weeks now, Chip, Pastor Chip has been talk to, talking with you about the I am statements of Jesus. Who does Jesus say that he is? He's talked about, I am the resurrection and the life. I'm the bread of life. And there's more to come. But today we're gonna to kind of go back to the beginning. Where did those I am statements start? Well, they started with God in the Old Testament. So kids, here's what I want you to look at. Today when you're listening to the story, you're gonna hear about a baby in a basket. Now, do you guys know who the baby in the basket was? Tell me if you think you know. I heard it, Moses, this is Moses, yep. You're gonna also hear about sheep. You're gonna hear about a shepherd's staff, right? A shepherd uses it to take care of sheep. And you're also gonna hear about, I don't like this thing, a snake, okay? So those are the things, oh, and a bush. And I want you to listen for the words, I am, the statement that God says. So you have like seven different things that you need to listen for today as we're talking about our story. So. Today we are gonna talk about Moses. And yes, this is baby Moses. Now you know, Moses was born to an Israelite lady at the time that the Israelites were slaves in Egypt. And it was a time when Pharaoh, the king of Egypt said, okay, no more Israelites. They're getting too big of a population. They're gonna overtake Egypt before too long. So we're gonna stop this. So any baby boys that are born to an Israelite family, we're gonna kill them. Whoa. So there's an Israelite lady named Jochebed. Jochebed has a beautiful baby boy. And oh, can you imagine the fear that she had? Knowing that Pharaoh says all the baby boys are to be killed. So Jochebed did everything that she could to hide her precious baby boy for as long as she possibly could at home. But we all know what babies do, right? They cry, they start crawling, they get, they get around, right? So she did everything she could. And she realized, that I've got to do something else to save my baby boy. So she made a basket. She coated it so that it would float in the Nile River. She took her precious baby boy and put him in that basket. And she put that basket in the Nile River, ugh. And then she told her daughter Miriam, okay, stand here and watch, see what happens to your baby brother. Before long, the Bible tells us that the princess, Pharaoh's daughter, came down to the river and she discovered this basket floating. She looked inside of it and there was a sweet baby boy. And she knew right away, this is a baby boy that belongs to one of the Israelites. But you guys, she couldn't take it to her dad. She realized, I'm gonna protect this little boy. She wanted to raise this little boy as her own. So she did. She named him Moses. And she took him to say, they lived in the palace. You guys, Moses was the prince of Egypt. He was an Israelite, but he lived in the palace with the princess, with the king, the Pharaoh, his grandpa, right? He grows up raised as an Egyptian. He's in the palace for 40 years, and as he's there in Egypt, he realizes, you know what? I wasn't born as an Egyptian. I was born as an Israelite. He knows that. And in the process, he sees how the Egyptians are treating the Israelites so badly. And one day he's out and about, and he sees an Egyptian being so cruel to some Israelites. And Moses gets so angry, he ends up killing that Egyptian man. Whoa. Now his grandfather, the Pharaoh, is very angry with Moses, and Moses knows it. So Moses flees and runs from Egypt. He goes to a place called Midian, 
which is a desert. And there he meets his wife. They get married and he ends up working for his father-in-law, Jethro. Now get this, you guys. Moses was the prince of Egypt living in a palace. Now he's in the desert working for his father-in-law who is a shepherd. I mean, that's what Moses is gonna be is a shepherd taking care of dirty little sheep. So he goes from a palace to being a shepherd. Kind of the lowest of low jobs back then. And the Bible tells us that he's been a shepherd for about 40 years now. So Moses is about 80 years old. And that's where our story is going to start today. So here's what I'd like for you to do. Kids, I brought up all of our Bibles from downtown. So there's some Bibles in the rows that belong that are kid Bibles. So if you have a kid in your row, pass it to the kid. And I want you all to look up the book of Exodus. It's right at the beginning of the Bible. It's Genesis and Exodus. And we're going to look at Exodus chapter 3, starting with verse 1. And we're going to read all the way through verse 15. So I would love for you to look it up. Parents, help your kiddos. Follow along with them. Because I want your kids to get used to reading the word of God, right? It will be on the screen too. Once you get there, if you would stand with me for the reading of God's word, I would love that this morning. So please stand. And you can follow along in your Bible or follow along on the screen. And here we go. Moses was taking care of the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro. Jethro was the priest of Midian. Moses led the flock to the western side of the desert. He came to Horeb. It was the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him from inside a burning bush. Moses saw that the bush was on fire but it didn't burn up. So Moses thought, hmm, I'll go over and see this strange sight. Why doesn't this bush burn up? The Lord saw that Moses had gone over to look, so God spoke to him from inside the bush, and he called out, Moses, Moses. Here I am, Moses said. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals. The place that you are standing on is holy ground. He continued, I am the God of your father, I am the God of Abraham, I am the God of Isaac, and I am the God of Jacob. When Moses heard that, he turned his face away. He was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have seen how my people are suffering in Egypt. I have heard them cry out because of their slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. So I've come down to save them from the Egyptians. I will bring them up out of that land, and I will bring them into a good land. It has a lot of room. It's a land that has plenty of milk and honey. The Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites live there. And now Israel's cry for help has reached me. I have seen how badly the Egyptians are treating them. So now Moses, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh. I want you to bring the Israelites out of Egypt. They are my people. But Moses spoke to God. Huh, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? He said, who am I that I should bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God said, I will be with you. I will give you a sign. I will prove that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, all of you will worship me on this mountain. Moses said to God, well, suppose I go to the people of Israel. Suppose I say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And suppose they ask me, what is his name? Then what do I say? God said to Moses, I am who I am. Here is what you must say to the Israelites. Tell them, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord is the God of your fathers. He has sent me to you. He is the God of Abraham. He is the God of Isaac. And he's the God of Jacob. My name will always be the Lord. Call me this name for all time to come. Would you bow your heads and pray with me this morning? Father God, I just thank you for your word that we can read and that we can learn from. God, I pray today that you would open our ears to listen and our minds to understand and our hearts to receive what you would have for us this morning. So guide our time together, God. In your name we pray, amen. You may be seated. So here we have Moses. He's now out on this mountain called Horeb, taking care of his sheep, right? He's a shepherd. He looks over and he sees this bush. And all of a sudden, this bush just lights up. In fact, it's on fire. It's burning, but it's not burning. It's on fire, but it's not burning 
up. And Moses cannot believe his eyes. The Bible tells us that Moses goes over a little bit closer to take a look because it's such a strange sight that it's not burning. And when Moses gets a little closer to the bush, he hears a voice calling his name. Moses, Moses. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was out in a desert with my sheep and I'm getting close to a bush that's on fire and all of a sudden it says my name, I had to be backing away and saying, okay, little sheep, let's go, right? Moses did not though. Moses stuck near the bush and he said, here I am. Do not come any closer. Take off your sandals because the place you are standing on is holy ground. So Moses listened. He took off his sandals and he's still staying kind of back but close a little bit. And then the voice said to him, I am the God of your father. I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. Okay, now when Moses heard this, that this is God, Moses like turned his face away, the Bible says, because Moses did not want to look at God. So he turns his face away. He's afraid to look at God. But then God told Moses some more. I have seen how badly my people, the Israelites, are suffering in Egypt, and I have heard their cry for help. I am sending you to Pharaoh in Egypt to bring my people out of there. Okay, so Moses listened to God, but then Moses basically says, okay, God, you have the wrong guy for the job. I mean, why me? Who am I that I should go to Egypt and bring the Israelites out? Why are they even going to listen to me? I am no way ready for this. You've got the wrong guy. I'm not equipped. Nope, 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 nope. Well, Moses has this long conversation with God as you read on in the Bible. And you guys, I love this. It's like he's going back and forth with God, having this conversation with God, saying, God, why me? How am I going to do this? I don't understand. I'm not ready for this. But you know what is so amazing to me? God listens to Moses. God hears everything that Moses has to say. He listens to every single question Moses asks. And God has an answer for everything that Moses asks. Wow, God's listening you guys, Moses doesn't feel equipped in God. said, hey, you know what? I know you're afraid people won't listen. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you some signs to show the people. Like, like if you take your staff, your shepherd's staff, and if you drop your staff on the ground, your staff is going to turn into a snake. Ugh. And when you pick that snake up, it'll turn back into your staff again. God gave Moses other signs like that too. So you know what's cool to me is God tweaked the plan a little bit just so Moses would feel a little more comfortable, right? And then Moses said, but, 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 I, I, God, I stutter. I, I, I can't talk. Why do you want me to go? I mean, I, I can't do this. And God said, hold on, Moses, I got you. How about we send your mother, your brother Aaron with you? He can talk. He's a good speaker. So everything that Moses says, God gives him an answer and makes Moses feel a little more comfortable, right? So Moses says, okay, I'll make the decision, God. I will, I will follow you. I'll listen. But then he says to God, but, but hold on. So I'm going to go and I'm going to say, hey, all you Israelites, come on, follow me. Let's get out of here, right? Let's go. But, but what if they look at me and say, okay, you said that our God is leading us out, but who is this God? What's his name? And God answers Moses with the first I am statement. Here it is. I am who I am. Tell the Israelites that I am sent me to you. I am sent me to you. So let's think about this, you guys. So here's Moses feeling like he can't go do this because he's not equipped to do it. I mean, for heaven's sakes, he was a prince in a palace and he was all that in a bag of chips, right? I mean, he was all that and more in the palace. And now he's this lowly little shepherd and he's thinking, all right, okay, so I'm supposed to go and these people, if they do know me, they think of me as the prince of Egypt and they're not going to listen to me. Some of them probably don't know me at all. I mean, and then I'm supposed to tell them that I am sent me to you? I don't know, but you guys, if we think about that I am who I am statement, in essence, God is saying, Moses, I'm going to be with you. You can trust me. Let me be who I say that I am. I'm promising you that I will walk with you. I will go with you. I will go before you and beside you and behind you. Moses, let me be who I say that I am, and I am God, and I promise to walk with you. 
Let me do in you and through you what I've said I can do. Let me show you who I am. It's almost as if God is re-energizing Moses. He was a prince. Now he's become this lowly shepherd. And God's saying, Moses, I know you're 80 years old. Moses, I know you say you can't talk. But Moses, I can do this through you. Allow me to. Let me be who I say I am. And you know what? As I read on in the book of Exodus, as I was getting this ready, it's like God and Moses have this ongoing conversation because there's so many things that happen that the Israelites question. And so Moses goes to God. And in Exodus 34, we see Moses going up to get the second set of stone tablets with the Ten Commandments. Because you know he got the first set. And then he smashed them on the ground because the Israelites were doing all kinds of crazy things. So he goes up to get the second set of the Ten Commandments. And listen to what God says to him in Exodus, Exodus 34, verse 6. He says to Moses, I am the Lord, the Lord. I am the God who is tender and kind. I am gracious, and I am slow to get angry. I am faithful and full of love. What a beautiful picture of who God is. It's like he's saying to Moses, hey, Moses, remember? I am who I am, and I promise you, I am with you. I love you. You can count on me. So come on, Moses, we got this. Let's go back down this mountain together, right? We can do this. Isn't it good to know today that that same God that spoke to Moses in the burning bush, that spoke to Moses on that mountain, is the same God that speaks to us today? If we just take that step into that place that God calls us into and say, here I am, and we listen and follow his voice, even in our uncertainty and our questions and our feelings of inadequacy, our God will be the great I am. He will use us and work in us and through us, and God will give us everything we need to do the job that he asks of us. He wants to show us who he is, but it's up to us to step out in faith and follow. In just a few minutes, we have several friends who are gonna get baptized. And these people have chosen to take that next step to say, here I am. God, I'm ready to follow you. I want you to work in me and through me, just like you worked in Moses and through Moses. And you, God, you guys, God stuck with Moses on this whole journey. And that's what he wants to do with us. He promises to walk beside us. He is our great I am, if we'll just let him be.